Hitler had an extensive personal library with over 16,000 books. He probably read more books than any world leader in history. He claimed to read at least one book a night. Here are some of his favorites. Biography of Frederick the Great by Thomas Carlyle. The chapter that captured his attention concerned the miracle of the House of Brandenburg, the unexpected death of the anti-Prussian Tsarina Elizabeth at the height of the Seven Years' War, and her replacement with the pro-German Peter III, which decisively changed Prussia's military fortunes. Hitler read this book days before committing suicide in his bunker, believing that he will be saved as Friedrich was. Shakespeare Hitler loved Shakespeare and owned his complete works in a hand-tooled leather edition. Shakespeare's to be or not to be was a favorite phrase. He had a ten-volume translation of Shakespeare's collected works, bound in leather with a swastika and his initials embossed on the spine. Hamlet and Julius Caesar were some of his favorites. Fire and Blood by Ernst Jünger is a collection of war diaries and essays by a German World War I soldier. Unlike most war essays that focus on the horrors of war, Jünger portrayed war as a transformative and even exhilarating experience. This sentiment on war was widely held by the militaristic Nazis. Last of the Mohicans and Leatherstocking Tales by James Fenimore Cooper Tales of the American frontier fascinated Hitler. They were his introduction to his favorite literary genre, the novels of Karl May. May was arguably his favorite novelist. Hitler said, The first Karl May that I read was The Ride Across the Desert. I was overwhelmed. I threw myself into him immediately, which resulted in a noticeable decline in my grades. During World War II, Hitler recommended that his generals read May to hone their military prowess. In moments of despair, Hitler himself reportedly turned to Karl May the way others might turn to the Bible. Winnetou, Old Shorehand, and the Yellow One were some of his favorites. The World as Will and Representation by Arthur Schopenhauer Hitler was noticed to have this book with him in the trenches during the First World War. Arthur Schopenhauer takes us on a deep dive into the nature of everything around us. He suggests that there's this powerful force like a hidden driver influencing our desires and actions. It's not just about what we see, but what's going on beneath the surface. He explores things like why we want what we want, why life can be tough, and what it all means. It's a book that tries to make sense of the fundamental aspects of our existence. The International Jew by Henry Ford Hitler regarded Henry Ford as his inspiration. Ford's volumes were also on the recommended reading list printed on Nazi Party membership cards. In the International Jew, Ford claims that the Jews control finance, media, politics, and manipulate world events for their own gain. Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe The most popular 19th century novel and after the Bible was the second best-selling book of that century. The book's impact on the American public on slavery was so powerful that when President Abraham Lincoln met Harriet Beecher Stowe at the start of the American Civil War, he stated, So this is the little lady who made this big war. This novel vividly depicts the harsh realities of slavery in the 19th century United States. Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. Defoe narrates the tale of an English sailor marooned on a desert island for nearly three decades. An ordinary man struggling to survive in extraordinary circumstances, Robinson Crusoe wrestles with fate and the nature of God. Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes Don Quixote has become so entranced by reading chivalric romances that he determines to become a knight-errant himself. In the company of his faithful squire, Sancho Panza, his exploits blossom in all sorts of wonderful ways. While Quixote's fancy often leads him astray, he tilts at windmills, imagining them to be giants, Sancho acquires cunning and a certain sagacity. Sane madman and wise fool, they roam the world together. With its experimental form and literary playfulness, 
Don Quixote has been generally recognized as the first modern novel. Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift A fantastical journey where the protagonist encounters bizarre civilizations and outlandish creatures in this satirical masterpiece, Swift's biting wit explores human nature and societal follies through the lens of Gulliver's extraordinary adventures, making it a timeless classic that entertains and provokes thought. The Foundations of the Nineteenth Century by Houston Stuart Chamberlain Chamberlain argues that the Aryan race, which he claims includes the Germanic and Nordic peoples, is superior to other races in terms of intelligence, culture, and achievements. His arguments are based on his interpretation of history, culture, and anthropology. The Passing of the Great Race by Madison Grant This book argued that American dominance resulted from the superiority of Nordic bloodlines. Hitler would later call this book My Bible. The Prophecies of Nostradamus is a collection of predictions written by the 16th century French astrologer Michel de Nostradamus, known as Nostradamus. His followers claim that he predicted the Great Fire of London in 1666, the French Revolution, the rise of Adolf Hitler and World War II, and even September 11th. On War by Karl von Clausewitz has been noted by Hitler's go to point when he was thinking over military matters. On War is the most significant attempt in Western history to understand war, both in its internal dynamics and as an instrument of policy. Since the work's first appearance in 1832, it has been read throughout the world and has stimulated generations of soldiers, political leaders, and intellectuals. Pierre Gint by Henrik Ibsen. This drama humorously yet profoundly explores the virtues, vices, and follies common to all humanity, as represented in the person of Pierre Gint, a charming but irresponsible young peasant. Based on Norwegian folklore and Ibsen's own imaginative inventions, the play relates the roguish life of the world wandering Pierre, who finds wealth and fame but never happiness, although he is redeemed by love in the end.